When we think of Switzerland, we think of the magnificent Alps, tranquil lakes, retro villages, sophisticated cities, and colossal castles. It is also known for its chocolate, cheese, its banking system, and watches. The country also has its own currency, the Swiss franc. If you look at the map, you'll see that Switzerland is located right in the middle of the European countries. It is a landlocked, mountainous country that shares its 1,935 square kilometer border with these European countries Austria, France, Germany, Italy, and parts of Liechtenstein. There are three distinct geographical regions in the country the Alps, which cover roughly 58% of the country, followed by the Central Plateau, which accounts for 31%, and the Jura, which accounts for about 11%. It also has 49 mountain peaks that are 4,000 meters or higher in elevation. But how did a country with a land area of 41,285 square kilometers manage to remain neutral and unaffected, particularly during World Wars I and II? Did anyone try to conquer it? And if they did, how come they did not succeed? In this video, we are going to share 8 reasons why Switzerland is practically untouchable even today. Number 1. Its military power. You wouldn't believe it, but just this year, Switzerland was ranked 32nd out of 142 countries in terms of a military power ranking. Considering that the country only measures 41,285 square kilometers, it sure says a lot about them. So, how did Switzerland come to be where they are now? The army of the country had a reputation, which they solidified during the Napoleonic Wars. After this period, this lovely and peaceful country began to organize its military. Even though Switzerland did not participate in World War II, they were required to main vigilance, so they used Type 41 patrol boats that were armed with machine guns to keep their territory safe. Even then, the country went to commission nine ships during the years 1941 and 1944. Sooner or later, these ships were upgraded in 1964 with advanced radars, radios, and modern armament, and remained in service until the late 1980s. The Swiss Army also uses advanced riverine patrol boats called the Patrullenboot 80 to patrol the lakes Geneva, Lucerne, Lugano, Maggiore, and Constance. Motorboat Company 10 was in charge of one of these, which was a Corps of Engineers vessel. But later in June of 2019, Marine Alutech, a Finnish shipbuilder, delivered the first four of the 14 Patrullenboot 16, the successor of the Patrullenboot 80, to the flotilla as a mark of heritage. These were just a few demonstrations of how the Swiss took to defending their country. Today, every physically fit male Swiss citizen is conscripted into the army, with the majority serving in the reserves. Usually, when the men reach the prime age of 19, they are recruited. Recruits who do not speak the local language will be taught in their native tongue, except for a small number of Romish-speaking recruits who will be taught in German. Officers are not usually careering regulars, as they are in most other comparable armed forces. Once they are all taken in, the soldiers would be required to complete an 18-week recruit school. This was established as part of the country's recent army reform. Not everyone makes it through the screening process. Those found unsuitable for military or civil protection services or are incapable of performing those services are exempt from serving, but they must pay a 3% annual income tax until they reach the age of 37 unless they are disabled. If a male candidate does not want to opt for military service, there are other options available. If the conscripts are found to be physically fit for regular military service but object for religious reasons, they can apply for civilian service instead. This was a rule implemented in 1996. While serving civil service, the conscript has to undertake a variety of social services, such as cultural site reconstruction, elderly assistance, and other non-military activities. Though these services are 340 days longer than military training, they must complete them. Others who don't want to apply for civil service and are found to be unfit for regular military service have to work as assistants in the police department, fire departments, or health departments as laid out by the Swiss government. They can also choose natural disaster relief and crowd control operations amongst these. When it comes to women, they are not required to serve in the military, however, they can volunteer for any position. In 2016, 18,000 women soldiers had to be conscripted because of a shortage in the annual number. 
When women join the military services, they automatically have the same rights and responsibilities as men in the military, and they can join any service, including combat units. Some important timeless we must know about Switzerland's military. In March of 2007, the Swiss Federal Assembly approved a resolution to eliminate the requirement to keep weapons at military bases. Since then, soldiers no longer need to carry any ammunition during guard duty. Soldiers who wish to avoid carrying arms are allowed to sign up for unarmed service. However, they must still wear a uniform and keep themselves ready to defend Switzerland if needed. On September 22, 2013, a referendum was held in Switzerland to abolish conscription. Over 73% of those who voted against eliminating conscription, with a turnout of 47%, voted no. The Swiss Armed Forces had 120,496 active duty personnel as of the 1st of March 2017, with 9,163 professionals and the rest being conscripts or volunteers. Women made up 929 of the total military volunteers, accounting for less than 1% of the total, with over 25% serving as officers. Number 2. Switzerland's Economic System Because of its small size and closeness to the rest of Europe, the Swiss economy is strong. Its small population ensures steady growth, and its geographic location allows it to take advantage of open borders with neighboring countries. The banking system in Switzerland is also efficient and stable, with the added benefit of having a strong stock market foundation. The tax system in the country is also very competitive, which attracts foreign investors. Exports are important to both large and small businesses in the country. These characteristics lead to a strong economy and prosperity. Furthermore, because Switzerland is located in Europe, it will always have market access and competition. It has excellent infrastructure as well as a stable political environment. As a result, the country provides an appealing environment for new businesses looking for a low-cost base of operations. Meanwhile, Switzerland's tax system is decentralized, meaning that each canton sets its taxes. This allows each canton to create its tax policy. And that's fantastic! Switzerland's labor market is also stable, with the lowest unemployment rate in the entire world. The reason for this is that the country has a large workforce that is both skilled and educated. Strikes are also uncommon due to the country's social partnership between employees and employers. Because of the favorable economic climate, many multinational corporations have set up their businesses in Switzerland. We've all seen it in the movies that if someone wants to hide their stash of cash, they go to the Swiss. And there's a reason why. The Swiss financial sector, after all, is a global leader in transaction financing as well as a major center for insurance and reinsurance. That is why you will find a large number of banks and insurance companies in Switzerland. The main financial hubs are Zurich and Geneva, both of which have an international reputation, with Lugano coming in third. You will be amazed to know that the Swiss financial sector is an important part of the Swiss economy as it contributes roughly 10% to its GDP. It's no surprise that the Swiss take their money very seriously. In addition, the country has advanced financial policies that work in conjunction with international tax, anti-money laundering, and anti-terrorist financing to maintain financial market stability. These financial policies also have an appropriate legal and regulatory framework, such as removing barriers to market access for fintech firms that allows their financial sector to provide high-quality products and services while remaining innovative. The Swiss are also known to have the highest income rates in the EU. But with high wages, the cost of living is also high. So where do the Swiss spend most of their money? They usually spend nearly one-third of their total income on social security, taxes, and health insurance. The reason for this is to get additional benefits. Also, they believe in saving around 10% of their income just in case of any emergencies. Number 3. Advanced Telecommunications What do you think makes Switzerland a highly attractive location for technological business? Its ultra-modern radio and television, mobile and fixed networks, and broadband infrastructure are the reason for this. It is also one of the reasons why you will find big IT companies like Google, Facebook, and more in this place. How did things get to this point? A lot has changed since the first national medium wave radio transmissions in the early 1930s. Today, the Swiss are known to have cutting-edge telecommunication systems. 
You'll be surprised to know that Switzerland is one of the first countries in the world to implement the new 5G wireless technology. In Switzerland, other fixed networks and broadband infrastructure are constantly being upgraded. It's no surprise that there are world-class telecommunications companies there. These businesses can also take advantage of Switzerland's extensive fiber optic network. Number 4. Energy and Weaponry Systems It's interesting to note that non-renewable or imported energy accounts for roughly 80% of Switzerland's energy consumption. Oil, nuclear and hydroelectric power and natural gas have long been Switzerland's primary sources of energy. The country wanted to do something different about climate change. They thought of changing the way they used energy. In 2011, they began an energy transition to decrease their reliance on fossil fuel imports. In came the Energy Strategy 2050. This plan was launched by the Federal Council in 2011. Its main motive was to reduce consumption and promote the use of more environmentally friendly energy sources. The new energy strategy, which is already being implemented in stages, also aims to significantly reduce non-renewable energy consumption and increase the share of renewables in Switzerland's energy mix by 2050. Additionally, the energy strategy also stated that when the country's nuclear power plants reach the end of their useful lives, they will be decommissioned. The weaponry system in Switzerland is also impressive. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, or the SIPRI, it is currently the 14th largest exporter of weapons. The amount of weapons they export has an impact on the country's GDP. The weapons and firearms sector alone contributed 2.5% to the country's GDP in 2020. When you consider that Switzerland is a small country, that is a huge number. In 2020, Swiss companies exported $965 million worth of military equipment to 62 countries. The following year, global military spending surpassed $2 trillion for the first time ever, setting a new high. When measured in global terms, this amount accounts for roughly 0.7% of all official military equipment exports. Number 5. The Industrial Strength When it comes to machine and electrical engineering and the metals industry, Switzerland is the largest employer and exporter. To date, there are a total of 500,000 people who work in the machine, electrical engineering, and metal industries. In 2015, Swiss exports in this industry accounted for 31% of total exports, while the European Union as a whole accounted for 60%. This means that Switzerland accounts for nearly half of the total exports produced by Europe. Now that's impressive. This was not always the case in Switzerland, however. The industry began taking shape after the textile manufacturing revolution during the 19th century. Swiss companies began automating production around this time. They began developing their machines to avoid having to rely on their English competitors for the necessary machinery. Chemical and metal companies in Switzerland, particularly machine tool and textile and printing machine manufacturers, are among the most competitive in the world today. In terms of volume, Switzerland is among the top 10 exporters of machinery in the world. There are over 2,500 companies represented, including major brands like ABB, Alstom, Lieber, George Fischer, Sulzer, Bucher Industries, Bueller Holding, and Schindler. Number 6. Advanced Mobility Because of its central location in Europe, Switzerland plays a significant role in the cross-alpen transportation of people and goods. As a result, they have constructed the world's longest railway tunnel. The Swiss have also built several roads and railway tunnels to cross the Alps along Europe's north-south axis. But when it comes to transportation, they would always choose rail over other options. Switzerland's economy, like all economies, relies on rail, road, and air transportation. However, rail is considered one of the pillars of Swiss mobility in Switzerland. The Swiss love their trains. You'll be surprised to learn that they are the world leaders in train travel, and they regard trains and railways as the most important mode of transportation. The Swiss are also environmentally conscious, so they choose their modes of transportation carefully. Currently, Switzerland is pursuing a policy of shifting freight transport from road to rail to reduce the impact on the population and the environment. You might also be surprised to learn that each resident of Switzerland travels by rail, covering an average of 2,400 kilometers per year. Number 7. Bomb Shelter and Anti-War Housing 
The world was crippled as a result of World War II. Even though Switzerland did not participate in the war, it began constructing homes with 40 centimeter thick concrete ceilings to help its citizens survive firebombings, such as the ones that destroyed Hamburg and Dresden. They started building radiation and blast shelters in the 1960s that could withstand 1 to 3 bars or 100 to 300 kPa of pressure from a nuclear explosion. Blast shelters, which can accommodate 114% of the Swiss population, must first be built following the country's building codes. There are also large underground parking garages in small towns that could serve as sealed community shelters. In addition to this, the country has hospitals and command centers in place to keep the country running in the event of an emergency. However, how does the country ensure that these are maintained? Every family or rental agency in Switzerland has to pay a replacement tax to support these shelters. If they couldn't, they could own a personal shelter in their home. Number 8. Prepared for Combat The Swiss are always well prepared. Even throughout history, they have always found a way to reclaim their lands. During the Cold War, Switzerland was prepared for a Russian invasion. The reason for this is that the Soviet Union associated it with NATO, despite the country's declaration of neutrality. The goal of an invasion, according to the Swiss government, would be to control the economically important transport routes through the Swiss Alps, specifically the Goddard, Simplon, and Great St. Bernard passes. As a result, the country prepared for it without hesitation. Are you curious as to what steps were taken? Let's look at what we know about Switzerland's battle-ready plans. If an invasion were to occur from the country's borders, the Swiss armed forces would retreat to the mountains and engage in guerrilla warfare. Furthermore, nearly every land entry into the country is rigged with explosives, not to mention the AA and anti-tank guns hidden in the mountains that only the Swiss army knows about. They also constructed permanent fortifications in the Alps to serve as bases for fighting enemies in the fertile valleys. The Swiss have also built camouflaged cannons and fortifications near the Furka Pass in the Goddard region. The fortifications at St. Maurice, the Goddard Pass area, and Sargans are said to be the best built in the country as these are the country's entry points. Though the army hasn't used the fortification on the west side of the Rona at St. Maurice since the early 1990s, the east side, also known as Satan, is still in use. Tunnels, highways, railroads, and bridges are usually planned by a military officer because they are built with tank traps and demolition charges to be used against invading forces. Hidden guns are a common thing. The purpose of this was to prevent enemy forces from attempting to rebuild. If there were attacks through airspace, the aircraft, crew, and supporting equipment are housed in the caverns that are adjacent to normal runways. This makes it easier for the Swiss army to fight without losing much time. I hope these reasons have justified why Switzerland is untouchable. If you think we've missed out on a few, do let us know in the comment section below. If you liked our content, you can always hit the subscribe button along with a bell icon to get updates on our next video. Don't forget to like and share this with your friends. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next one.